welcome episode nine. Nine. Me Dark presents Christmas movie mayhem. Oh snap! We're flipping the script. We we is doing Christmas. We are. How do you not? There's so many great options. Well, yeah, we're going to be watching Christmas movies this month, so that's what we're going to talk about. I'm excited yeah. to change I'm, it up. I'm excited because we could all use a little festivity and cheer. I know. Look, we got our whole we got a whole Christmas set up here. We're wearing Christmas hats. We got a tree behind us. We got our fancy tree. One of our fancy trees. All right, this is tree number two. This is bar tree. This, this is, is the bar tree. This is the black Christmas tree. Yeah, so fun fact, my sister told me she wasn't going to come over for Christmas anymore because I had a black Christmas tree, and mm-hmm. so I had to change it. All right. <laughs> You're going to wear your glasses the whole show? I am. Why? You're going to have little rings and the light rings in your eyes. I, it looked like it didn't have that. So All right. Why are you adding this in here? I don't know. I can cut it out. It's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it on camera. It wasn't bad. So um, you and I jump into Christmas pretty early typically so we have halloween out immediately like end of september early yep. october and then pretty much november 1st when we're taking down all of the halloween stuff and putting it into bins we just pull out the christmas stuff at the same time it just makes the most sense um and we pretty much decorate for christmas you know november right in the beginning of november yeah i like to just bridge the gap i think my house feels too empty right like we feel like we're in like a warehouse after you take down all the halloween <laughs> and i've got to keep it you're not full. you're not ready to give up on the festivities. no i'm not you just go from one level of festive and like don't come at me with the thanksgiving decorations there's no, no such thing like lame. it's just a bunch a of leaves gourd and shit yeah it's like pumpkins. you take all the scary shit and just leave the rotting pumpkins with some dried ass leaves like it's i'm stupid. good yeah leaves and no pilgrims we'll just what the jump hell do you over. decorate for thanksgiving who that cares? i just told you yeah, rotten cares? ass pumpkins and dried leaves like i'm good cornucopias no one has that like that's stupid it's just a that lot of make me feel good right it's like a lot of brown orange mm. yellow doesn't go in our house well no. it goes from halloween to christmas yep if you do it any differently you're doing it wrong yep yeah. i mean it also gives us that time to really curate the decorations Oh, yeah. I mean, our house is very decked out right now. I mean, we have it's like Christmas threw up in here, but I like it. It's cheerful. It's festive. And it makes me happy to be here. So the giveaway is officially over. Um, I guess we'll be announcing the winner today when the podcast turns out. We're obviously um, recording this earlier in the week and the contest ended just yesterday. So we haven't had time to uh, officially announce it um, on the show through commentary. But (laughs) It'll be announced the day that the show comes out, which is now. Yeah, I've got to do my actual job. <laughs> yes, first. we all have to do our actual jobs <laughs> on top of this. Unless um, y'all want to make this our only job, then maybe. You then know. maybe one day. Um, so we're going to be doing Christmas movies all month long. Yep. We started with um, three movies here, two that we're pretty familiar with, one that we watch almost pretty much every year, and one that I'd never seen before, but you had seen. Yeah, um, it was like a light a light offering of Christmas movies. They're Christmas, but they're not Christmas in your face. It's funny because we've been watching so much horror movies and craziness in that capacity. Turning on a Christmas movie was like, <laughs> oh my God, like this is so light and fun and easy compared to everything else we've been watching. Oh my God. it's uh, It was actually, I found it almost hard to concentrate on it I because know. I'm used to so much eye-opening moments of the movies and instead I was just like oh no I'm just supposed to sit here and just laugh and be entertained that's really what it is like they just kind of make these Christmas movies as like look it's the end of the year you know everybody has like like one or two fucks left to give if that so let's just give them a dumb movie they don't have to think about that's just fun and that's exactly what these movies are They're, they're fun um so we're gonna start off with I think this is a holiday classic for us gremlins now we're gonna ease you into Christmas here because Gremlins has a little bit of like you know it's got the monsters. It's in the it. bridge. It's the bridge. It's bridging the gap. So we'll little start spooky. off. Little I think this is a perfect place to start. Yes. 1984. This is the year bo- you and I were both born. It's great, a great year. Great year. Great year. So Gremlins comes out. <laughs> you and I are born. The world is everything's right. Gizmo's with the world. created the most right. one of the most important characters of our generation. Hundred <laughs> percent. So this is directed by Joe Dante. I I was not familiar with his work really outside of this movie Small Soldiers in the late nineties. It was like um like a. Uh, animated like toy soldier movie. Do you remember oh Small Soldiers? Oh my God, I know about it. It's yeah. And no. I'm other than good. that, he didn't really do anything that I recognized. Um, other other than Gremlins and Gremlins Two. 
Um, it's written by Chris Columbus. Christopher Columbus. But Chris Columbus wrote The Goonies. It's very interesting. I, I get it. Great 80s movie. I kind of get it. I get it. You get it? You get the connection? Yeah, like I can see it being a... I can see it being related. He also wrote Christmas with the Cranks, which didn't make it to our holiday list. But it's not a terrible one. I don't know that I've seen Christmas with the Cranks. Uh, I think we Remind have Remind me of what ago. that one is, because at a certain point, a lot of these Christmas movies, like you look at the poster and it's like, this is, I've seen this. I Have I seen this movie? It looks like 17 other Christmas movies. I think this is the one with Jamie Lee Curtis, isn't it? In the family? Maybe? Yeah. I I, maybe we, we need to revisit this one, but I thought that that I one was I love Jamie funny. Lee Curtis. We know that. Christmas the Cranks is kind of like a Meet the Fockers <laughs> Christmas style. Okay. And he also wrote Christmas with uh, Christmas Chronicles, too. Everyone keeps telling me we need to watch these. Really? And uh, yes, everyone's like, oh, Christmas Chronicles, that one just came out. And I'm like, I just, I really can't get ba- past the bad Photoshop poster. <laughs> oh, it's horrendous. Like, <laughs> Kurt, Kurt Russell, Russell and and, Hol- and Goldie Hawn, they made them, they tried to make them look young, but they're still old. Right, like if you wanted people to look 20, then cast all, people Kurt who Russell, are 20. He already looks amazing for a guy his age. Like I yeah. could only hope to look as good as Kurt Russell when I'm that They age. gave Goldie Hawn a whole new face. Yeah, she, because she doesn't look good anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, she's kind of, she didn't age great. It's a, it's. Kind of bad fillers. That's what we're gonna. Oh, say. Oh, is that what it is? It's a lot of bad. See, fillers. you can recognize that stuff. I yeah. sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, just leave her face alone. If that's what her face is, if that's what her face is. You it's cast annoying. Her, you cast her in the movie. We're gonna see yeah. what she looks like on video. All this photo, yeah, like that's the other thing. You're gonna be like, where's the person on the cover of this? <laughs> and then you're like, they're like right there, and you're like, where? We've really gotten it. We've gotten so out of hand with the Photoshop. That's what I mean. It's just it's very like. It's more triggering to me now as I'm old, I guess, because I think of myself as like, oh, if I was in this position, if this was a famous podcast and someone was making ads for us, they'd be photoshopping the shit out of my face. I know. And that makes me so mad. That's weird. I would. Yeah, no. Only I can edit my face. (laughs) I always I always try to get on you about that. I'm like. Are you po- you're posting this. Did you edit my face in any way? Because you know I don't like I that. I won't touch your face. The only thing I edit is like, oh, the hair was in the way. A little out of place, you know, which is often that stuff for me. Is, Speaking of which, I got a fresh cut I know, here. and I was going to say, like, we went with the vibe where you, no one even knows. Nobody even knows because I It looks like on. you got a man bun under there. I'm back to being an adult. Yeah. You're went back to it. A- shaggy to classy. You know, he cleaned up. He thought he thought COVID was over and he cleaned, cleaned up. cleaned up for the holiday spirit. No, it actually was the opposite. <laughs> COVID <laughs> seemed to be getting worse. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, if I don't go out and get a haircut now, like what happens if we go into a, like a lockdown again? Like I'm going to be looking like Sasquatch. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyway. let's get back to Gremlins. One of our favorites. Um, oh, by the way, I found out today that they're doing a Gremlins 3 <gasps> and a Goonies 2. I don't really know if I want a Goonies 2, but Gremlins 3 I'm here for. I kind of feel you on that because Goonies, like so much of the magic of that movie was the cast. Yes. If you're just going to give me a whole new cast, then are you going to do the thing where you just rehash all the characters and the jokes? Right, because it's not like you're even telling me, sequel? oh, you're going to remake it. All right, right, fine. But like to make a 2 when those kids are now 50... Well, it's not going to be them, obviously. That's what I mean. Josh Brolin is one. He was one of the kids. I know. That's what I'm saying. Is like, <laughs> it's already dead to me because the magic mm. and the the right. charisma of that cast as a bunch of young people was incredible, mm-hmm. and that's what makes it. I don't know. I agree. But Gremlins, Gremlins I feel like three is three could be fun. Although, please, so the one thing I'll say about Gremlins right off the bat, I know. And it's true. Every time I watch yep. it, like I, I love these puppets. Yep. I love the way they look. If you're going to do a Gremlins 3 and you're going to try to feed me some CGI bullshit, I'm going to cry. I'll be so I'm going to cry. Because they look so, and we're not, we're now jumping ahead, but like they still look so good. They still look they so They still good. look so real. And like I could actually hold that thing and right. it's legit. Like don't give me some shitty ass cartoon looking Gremlins. No. I'm going to be pissed. So it's a really odd tone to kick off this movie, right? Yes. Because you have Mr. Peltzer, right? Randall Peltzer. He's the he's the dad. And he's just like it's almost like something out of like a 50s like film noir, but in color. Like he's in like a back alley somewhere in the city, like really sketchy area. It's all dark and you get like this moody voiceover. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, I don't remember there being like this narrator in the film. I remember because that. there isn't. It's only in the beginning. To set set things up, like to tell me about the plot and what's going on, 
And then they don't ever revisit him as a narrator in the film. So immediately I'm like, all right, that's, I love this movie, but that's bad. Like, again, show don't tell me. Why did you put the voiceover in there to begin with? Like, I would have been able to figure out just for, I bet you if you took that voiceover out and you just played the movie without it, it'd be fine. It was so weird. It's so weird. It's almost like if they had wrapped it up in a bow, Mm -hmm. (laughs) at least start and end it. With yeah. that? Yeah, exactly. Or somewhere in the middle? I think he does come back at the end. I think there is like a bookend narration. Oh, you're right. There is there is like a bookend. Yeah. But still, it's, but a, it's just, just not a enough. very odd choice, I thought. Especially for what the movie is. It's weird. But this is cool. Like this little boy like guides him over to the shop where his gra- his grandfather has. It's like this really badass looking old Chinese guy. Um, with the, you know he's got like the wonky eye and stuff, and he's just smoking a pipe. Like this guy's cool. He's as got hell. the long beard and the oh, he's so the cool. mustache from like Kill Bill. Yeah. No, I can only hope to be this cool at some <laughs> at some point in my life. But but uh, what always sticks in my brain about this freaking movie and this scene is the bathroom buddy. I gotta tell you about the bathroom buddy. The bathroom buddy. He has like this the the pitch that he gives for the bathroom. And he's almost like singing it. It's like bigger than an iPhone. It's it's a block. And all basically all he he didn't invent anything. Okay, all he did was he's like, oh, the Swiss Army knife is a thing for knives. I'll just make a bigger block and I'll just put everyday personal care products attached to this thing. So there's a razor, there's a toothbrush, there's a a toothpick, there's a there's a nail file, there's all this shit. Which could all just go in your toiletry bag in one place. But also, (laughs) yeah, yeah, it could. That's what I mean. Like you're not putting it in your pocket. Good full size versions of these. But that's what I mean. Like you're not putting it. You're not putting that brick in your pocket. No. So you're still you still need a bag. You're just carrying it around like an asshole. Like yeah. So what? Look at my bathroom, buddy. It's everything I put into my toiletry bag. Could you imagine carrying your bathroom everywhere with you? Like your toothbrush is on this thing, right? So you have to ride the subway to work, and you're just holding this fucking block with your toothbrush exposed to the subway i mean it's very clear that they're not considering him a good inventor so horrendous like he has the what's there's the orange juice thing that explodes all over the eggs the egg one the coffee remember the coffee when it's like comes out and just like comes out as like sludge yeah like chocolate sludge yeah no, he's the worst inventor. Worst ever. inventor of all time. But that's why I think it's great that they lead with that. Like he thinks this is the one. This is the invention yeah, that will do it. And you're like, bathroom, this is buddy. the worst one yeah. out of all of them. <laughs> it's bad. Like the other ones, if you could get them get them to, get work, them to work, I see some asshole buying it. I would to- yeah. Stop working on the stupid bathroom buddy and just refine those other ideas. Well, like- <laughs> um so yeah, he gets uh he finds Gizmo here, right? This old this old man that's- has Gizmo, Mogwai. Which is props to them for like you're coming up with a creature, Mogwai. That's a great name. Great name. It's a great name. Great name. And then I love the touch of like the dad calls him Gizmo because he makes all these gizmos, you know? Right. It's such a co- it's a cool way to connect the dots mm-hmm. and come up with a cute name. I almost named my dog Jubilee Gizmo, but I got <laughs> vote- vetoed on it. So he gives uh, Billy, his son, Gizmo. Um, now, when we're first introduced to Billy, his, like, his car won't start. It's like completely frozen. It's like a giant block of ice. And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm late to work. Let me just run. So he just runs into town with his dog. First of all, who brings their dog to work? Especially if you're running there. It's a there. big dog, too. I mean, he's not a huge dog. He's not bringing a St. Bernard. but No, but he's like not a, in a backpack. No. But yeah, I mean, I, we were just laughing at this. We're like, this guy's just going to run to work now because... His car won't start like you can't. But like, why wouldn't you go to like, mom, can I maybe borrow your car or call a friend for a ride or call a cab? He goes to work with his dog. at. A, I think he works at a bank, right? Yep. And uh, that crazy Kate, bitch with the brows. Um, uh, what's her name? Mrs. Deagle. Yep. So before Mrs. Deagle comes in and, you know, does her evil Cruella DeVille routine. <laughs> um, I want that dog. <laughs> we meet Kate. Played by, what's her name, Phoebe? Phoebe Cates. Phoebe Cates. Kate played by Cates. She was a girl on every man's wall. Really? Yes. This totally blew by me. Like, you were talking to me about it. You're like, oh, she was like the hot thing back then. Yes. And I'm like, I don't remember this. The iconic scene in is it Fast Times at Ridgemont High, where she's coming out of the pool in the red bikini. Um, so that was like one of the super iconic things where he dreams of her like just undoing her top yeah, yeah. so she was like 
the girl next door version of the girl that you put on your wall, not the Pamela Anderson or anything, but gotcha. like the more like, oh, she's cute. She's the more accessible. Yeah. Yeah. More realistic. Which is great for this movie. Again, he's a, a nerdy great, kid who works in a bank. Yeah, it's actually great casting. Um, yeah, so then Miss Deagle comes in. She does her Cruella de Vil thing. She, yells, she gets into a scuffle with some woman outside about, oh, the woman can't pay her rent or something like that. I guess Miss Deagle owns this whole freaking town. It's just like, it's a tale as old as time. But Not this woman has like the craziest hat scarf combo I've ever seen. It's wild. She's such a character. Yeah. So then Mrs. Deagle goes in, threatens the dog because he knocks over a snowman or whatever. I don't know. Fuck. I just fucking hate her. Everybody hates her. <laughs> I think you're supposed to. Yeah. Um, Corey Feldman comes over with a tree for the family dressed as a as a tree. I don't understand any of this. It's such a weird introduction to a character. First of all, why is he bringing the Peltzer family a tree? Why is he dressed they as a tree? They never address it. They never address it. Yeah. You don't know who he is, what his relationship is to anybody in the family. He's so young to be like the friend of... That's what's weird about <laughs> it because it is kind of that. He is Billy's friend. Right. It's almost like the situation of like you grew up next door to this kid and they were a little younger than you and that was okay, but then you hit your teenage growth spurt and now it's weird. It's very weird. It doesn't make <laughs> sense. I was almost like thinking to myself, like, did they just write this character in just so they can put Corey Feldman in this movie? Maybe. Because like, again, maybe you have needed, Phoebe Cates, you have Corey Feldman. Yeah, they just great needed the some time. star power. Yeah. They needed some name recognition to get this going. So like, let's yep. just write a character for Corey Feldman. It doesn't have to make any sense. He doesn't even have to be anywhere near Billy's age. Yeah. Nobody will care. Nobody yep. will question it. And I questioned it immediately because I was going, <laughs> wait, that's not supposed to be his little brother. Like right. I remember always thinking that and it would make sense if they would have just gave him a little brother. That would have made sense. So I don't know what the point of him not. I being. guess because you can't sell him as his brother. They don't look enough alike. Who the hell knows? Yeah. But anyway, he gets gizmo wet like an asshole. Right. <sighs> because there's three things you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to get him wet. You're not supposed to feed him after midnight. And what was the other one? The light, babe. Oh, the light. Sunlight will kill them. The bright the sunlight. light. Sunlight. Right. The bright light. So he gets his ass wet and boom, boom, Ugh. boom, boom, boom. We get more mockwise. It breaks my heart, but at the same time, it's so adorable. So this whole thing is weird to me because you can't get them wet or they reproduce. Like, how do they normally reproduce? Do they always just reproduce from water? That's yeah. the only way. And why can't they have water or drink don't all carbon life forms require water yeah it's very bizarre it's very bizarre like the that science doesn't thing. make any sense it's a cool thing because it keeps it very clean of like no water yeah no food after midnight and no sunlight and you're like all right great no problem but then when you think about the logic you're like how's this thing not get dehydrated does it not have i don't know does it not have water as part of I mean, its it doesn't makeup? bleed right they turn to goo no they do bleed not really. It's like it's goo. like a black green blood that yeah, when the gremlins goo say. almost. It's not like human insides blood, I guess, is what I'm saying. But yeah, it's definitely a weird thing that they never really. No. Th I think they just think you're not going to think about it because you're watching a movie about fucking gremlins. So. Well, yeah, it's still fun at the end of the day. It's right, just like, also, it's maybe just don't also fun it. to be like. You could have wrote like just put some effort yeah, into this writing is a, this. A furry creature who grows yeah. other animals off its back. If you get it wet, like I don't know if you should really analyze no, the I thought guess. process. I guess you're right. Well, even <laughs> the feeding them after midnight too. It's like, well, midnight till when? Like, when do we? What's the cutoff point? Like, when can I start feeding them? Twelve to four? Twelve like, to is six? Six a.m. Is he an early riser? I have no idea. I but I always love that Gizmo is the smartest one. Right. Like mm -hmm. because there's this almost this written idea in here of like as he multiplies, they get dumber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the more he has, like I always love the scene where it scrolls through all of them and you can just see like one is a little more doofier than the next. Yeah. But you also get the strong one. So mm -hmm. it has to be that cadence of like it starts Stripe. here. And it goes down, and yes, you get Stripe. But it's one of my he's the leader. They jokes. remind they have to they really hammer this that into your head. This one, this he's one here's the leader. leader. That's so Stripe. much so that you only give him only he gets a name. I love, uh, but that scene where they're all like packed around. He's like playing. Was he playing like a arcade game or a video game? And he's just yeah. like this, and they're all around him like he. Yeah. And poor little Gizmo's like 
siloed yeah, in the they box. they kind of bully him. Oh my God, I hate it. Well, then obviously this is followed up by, we get like this ridiculous scene where the dog is strung up on the porch with the lights, the Christmas lights. How the fuck did this gremlin do that? It's impossible. Like there were gremlins or mogwai at this point. If there were gremlins, I buy it. Yeah. They're little fur. They're gizmos. How are they opening the front door, carrying this dog up, stringing Especially it around? Especially again, that some of them they are doofy have, as fuck. This is so stupid. Yeah. Like it's like my Chihuahua this having is, his own little gang yeah. and stringing up a Labrador. This is like, such a stretch. Possible. Like, I'm, I think it's cool, like, stringing the dog up with the lights, but make it more believable where, it, like, you didn't have to open the front door and, like, string him yeah. elevated up. Like, it just didn't, it was so unnecessary. Yeah, but it does kind of lead you to believe that there's some intelligence in the Mogwai. Oh, they're intelligent as hell, like... You see it in the movie, like they speak English in certain spots. I like, love it. how do they know how to speak English? <laughs> they know some oh, words. Right. Like, yeah. they say, like they know the words for things that are going to be a problem. Yeah, Water. like Gizmo, you hungry? And Gizmo smart enough to be like, no, bitch, don't feed me. <laughs> but the other ones, are like, yeah, feed us, feed us, yeah. They're, that's how dumb they are. Oh yeah, Billy, or dumb and smart. No, Billy is an idiot. Like, He's an idiot. And the way he feeds them, a pile of fried chicken legs. All in a plate. Like it's just fried chicken legs piled one on top of the other. The mom is always in the kitchen. The whole movie, the all 80s, she man. does is she's just in the kitchen chopping shit, watching TV. Like the smallest TV with knobs and antennas. Like yeah. some of y'all watching this podcast don't even know that that TV ever existed. The only TV you know right. is a flat screen, not a cube that right. you were lucky if it fit on your nightstand. Right. <laughs> I mean that's but that's literally that's that was like life I guess back then or how people saw it, like what it was to be an American housewife yeah. was just got to get up and change you're the just channel in the kitchen watching TV like gossiping this is your life always making food dinner's ready when the hubby comes home yeah so he gives just him the whole passed. freaking plate of chicken why is it in the 80s that they depended on chicken wings like poltergeist chicken wing in the fridge i have to say it does look gnarly though just watching the mogwai like rip into the chicken yeah it's like that i guess it was good for the visual it's great for the visual like that i totally buy all right fine yeah so this is one of the freaking things that turns them into the gremlins obviously yeah but before that yes yeah, so this is my favorite part of the movie <laughs> well well it's my favorite because of how fucking stupid it is <laughs> like it is so stupid that i love it yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Because he decides, Billy and um, Corey Feldman, right? They decide we should take this to Mr. So and so, this, you know, the science teacher. It's basically Corey Feldman's middle school science teacher. Which you thought was a college professor and you were somewhat okay with it at that point. Yeah, because at first you don't really understand who this guy is or what the connection is or what his credentials are. So they bring him to this guy who's a science teacher professor or whatever and i'm going all right maybe they're at like the local university and they're gonna like study this thing seriously and like get to the bottom of this biology and all this stuff yeah but no this is not even close right he is a middle school fucking science teacher okay but that doesn't necessarily mean that like he wasn't super super smart and had all this great Babe, stuff and he never got out there's no shot like why First of all, you're if you're, you're analyzing that they can't have water in their livable creatures. No. If you're credentialed to be a middle school science teacher, you do not know how to administer a fucking blood test. Why? Because you're not in medicine. Maybe he started in med school and then couldn't I finish mean, you know and so he little, ended up in a teacher. You know a little obviously you know about the biology elements of it. You're knowledgeable in the field. But you by no means as a middle school science teacher have the means or nor the budget or the understanding to even fathom what this mogwai thing is yeah i mean i think when you start you can getting pretend to take blood and do a test <laughs> but first of all where is he running this blood work what lab well, is that's there a I lab mean. in the middle school it's like there were elements where i believed it up to a point but then when you get to the point of like why are you taking its blood what are you going to do with that like where's it going to go you're going to talk to the local hospital about like hey i have this creature and I'd love you to take this blood sample here and analyze it and tell me what you see. And then they lock you up in jail in a straitjacket because you're like, what? Yeah. So I get it. It's bizarre. But I'm saying like, it's not crazy that the kid would go to his science teacher that he trusts 
who else is he going to go to, right? Like the first person you go to is somebody you trust and you trust this guy who's a science teacher. That's fine. He should be able to do the experiments. That, no, well, that's fine. I buy that from their perspective. Yeah. They're young, they're naive. Right. But if, if you're that middle school science teacher, you're going to go, oh, well, that's interesting. I don't know dick about how to handle this. Maybe I'll pass this potential groundbreaking science over to some actual people that know what the hell they're doing. Or maybe Instead, this guy, the hubris on this. He wants asshole, the credit. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's a middle school science right, teacher. But he's going to try like someone drops a million dollars in your lap. Are you going to be like, let me give this to somebody who's more credentialed? Fuck no. You're going to try and do it yourself. Fine. Then go apply for a grant. <laughs> for hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> and staff it up for yourself and you're, then do it right. Like, what are you doing? You're really thinking too much about a movie about fucking okay, gremlins. Fine. Even if you don't concede that to me, there's a scene. <laughs> nah. There's a scene. It's two in the morning. Okay. <laughs> he's still at work. No, he's not at work. <laughs> yes, he's there. He is. It's not work. He's there for the gremlin. He's he's in the school for the Magwai. where he teaches middle school science. Yeah, that's his lab. What do you want? That's his fucking I, job that he has access to. What? First of all, what middle school science teacher has a lab? I don't know. I remember in our high school, there was like no. the lab when you were in the the bio. I was in biology, I guess, in the school. Yeah, biology. There was like this weird room where my teacher, it was like the it was like almost like a connecting hallway between cl classrooms. <clears throat> And they did have stuff there. Like, you got to think. You have chemistry class in high know. school. You have biology. So this guy's there. Earth science. Two, they have all the tools. He's there at 2 in the morning. And he's eating a sandwich. <laughs> okay, he's hungry, man. Like, what do you want? Maybe he never had his lunch. It was in the fridge. And cheese doodles. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Vending machine. Unbelievable scenario in my eyes. Um, Fair. But again, but so I stupid. I love it. Yes. Like, I love how stupid this is. It's the kitschiness of the it's film. It's so kitschy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Keep going. But, I mean, amazing. Because then, you know, obviously, he's the only reason he's eating the sandwich is so they could do the thing where the mogwai in the cage can pull it close, eat after midnight, and become a gremlin. Yep. That's the whole purpose Boom. of him being there that late and eating. It's just a simple plot device. And it... If you don't think about it too much, it makes sense. <laughs> but you overthink it as you do with everything. Yeah. All right. Keep I going. mean, you know, well, this is when the fun happens in the movie, right? We get the gremlins. Yep. And we get some, probably the best scene with the gremlins is the mom, right? That when the gremlins hatch in, in Billy's attic, his be attic bedroom upstairs, they mm -hmm. get out and they start causing a ruckus in the house while she's making the worst gingerbread cookies I've ever I've seen. I've ever seen. Nobody... Nobody holds the gingerbread like this and decorates it. Nobody. No. It's not effective. Well, you even see like this. See, that is more of a problem to me. Well, it is a problem, yeah. <laughs> but you could see like it's late, like when they show you like the finished product yeah. of what she's been decorating. No, you're like, thank oh you. my God, it's worse than the I thought it would be. The color scheme? It's no, it's Like, horrible. where, who chose those colors? So the gremlins attack her because she has ugly ass cookies. <laughs> and they, there's no way they could be delicious enough to make up for what they look like. But they attack her ass. But she's like, she's really crafty, the mom. I mean, she's with an inventor, babe. She's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> she's got to be on her toes at all times. <laughs> she's learned from his his skill set of being innovative. Yeah, she gets one in the blender, which is cool. We see. The, I love the blender one. Yeah, we see the like microwave the, one is one of the best. Yeah, she gets the one in the microwave. She just stabs one a bunch of times and kills it. There's the scene with her and Stripe. Stripe is really in the tree, but they do like the fake out where it's the big stocking. <laughs> Remember like the big stocking it's like in the something's middle? moving in the sock. Yeah. And instead it's just like a, a robot toy or whatever. Yeah. And then Stripe attacks her and then he's off. That's actually to... so good though because he hides really well in that tree. And he does. like, shit, there he is. Yeah, so he goes to the YMCA. <laughs> like, brilliant. Like, this is where you really realize like, Okay, these are smart animals. These aren't mm -hmm. just like dumb little pets that you keep and they're cute and cuddly and oh, that's that. They're gremlins, that. man. They're like, a terror. No, that that fucker knows to go to this place <laughs> because there's a swimming pool where yeah. he can multiply incessantly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he does, yeah. They <laughs> and do. that he does. What's your? I mean, what's your favorite gremlin scene? Like, I like the scene with the mom. There's the 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 bar one. The bar scene is kind of cool. 
The bar scene is, I don't know what my favorite one would be. I mean, There's I. so many good ones. Mrs. Deagle when she gets attacked by the gremlins. Yeah, that one I love because I hate Cause that. Because they're caroling. Remember, it's like them carol. That's, yeah, a, mem- that's that, a memorable that attack. That was going to be the one that I was going to say. Yeah. It's like, I just love the vision of the gremlins. Like, they're these evil looking things, but they're all cute, fake singing this shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's one of my favorites because you really see the gremlins. I you see the, the detail. The gremlins theme song is so catchy. It's so good. It's so good. There's so many good scenes in this just because they really created amazing creatures. Yeah. Amazing. Like the movement, the oh, look, so fun. the detail, the the way that they each have individual personalities, yeah, yeah. but I they still that. look so similar. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm obsessed. I'm yeah. obsessed. It's always been one of my favorites. No, it is. It's a great one. I just and you know, even though you can see it coming a mile away, I'm still always very satisfied by Gizmo taking out Stripe in the end. The fact that Gizmo gets in that little um, toy car, like the the it's pink the, best. the pink racer. <laughs> He's like, Zzz. oh my god, it's so good. But like, I just every scene with Gizmo, I love. He's the oh, cutest yeah. thing of all he time. Is so cute. Like, I just want to squish <clears throat> him. Mm-hmm. But. Even the the gremlins, I still love them. Like I still oh, yeah, think they're, they're so cute, even though they're creepy. Mm-hmm. I love gremlins for all its crazy and wacky flaws that it that it clearly has. It's still so fun, and it's fun to watch it this time of year again. A great mm-hmm. transition from watching our horror movies to easing into the yeah. festivity of Christmas. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, so let's do another one. Let's do. Uh, this is a favorite of ours. This um, is. We watch this every year. Yeah, I mean, I love this movie so fucking much. I can't even mm-hmm. <laughs> explain how much I love it. But so yeah. just friends, amazing from two thousand and five. Um, Ryan Reynolds, Gold, Amy Smart, yeah, Anna Faris, <clears throat> Chris Klein, Chris Klein. This is the heyday for all four of them. We're talking Varsity Blues. Yep. We're talking. Um, oh, it's a phenomenal cast. Yeah, I mean, it's like this is a very strong group. For our teenage years. Mm-hmm. This is uh, directed by Roger Crumble. He did Cruel Intentions. Remember that movie? Cruel Intentions is great. Mm-hmm. And The Sweetest Thing, which I know I love, love The Sweetest Thing. Yeah. You're too big to fit in here. <laughs> too big to fit in here. Oh, my God. I know that whole song. I could do the whole thing right now. I enjoyed that little bit that you just had. Right <laughs> you didn't um, want me to pull out the it's oozing and it's green? <laughs> Ew. Oh, <God>. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> I underestimated how much you like. I really know. Thing. I love that movie yeah. a lot. Um, so yeah, Ryan Reynolds plays Chris Brander, which great name. There's great names in this. Like the character names are amazing. I mean, like Jamie Palomino. Palomino. Yeah. So Chris Everything. Brander. Chris Brander is in love with Jamie Palomino. But God damn it, Dusty Dinkelman. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great name. I they're mean, they're all great so names. Good, like, you will swear in your mind that you that's knew a, a Jamie person. Palomino. Yeah. Like if someone came to you like, you remember Jamie Palomino? You would literally be like, yeah, why mm-hmm. do I remember that? And it makes you really think. And then you're like, oh, wait, no, it's just a fake fucking name. Right. In but just it feels Friends. like a name you've heard before. Yes. Like yeah. I would swear up and down like, no, that's Brilliant. a girl who went to my high school. It's mm-hmm. like, no, 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 it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it definitely is. It's it's an amazing cast, amazing set of names. So he loves her. He's the fat loser guy in high school with the retainer. Right. But he is definitely like a lovable loser. Right. Yeah. They, they give you that vibe right away. He's, sing, he's singing the I swear he's a good song. Guy. You know, yeah. He's, I swear. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> By the but he's doing it with like a lisp because the he lisp. has the retainer. Yeah. So good. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So he blows town because he gets uh, embarrassed at the end of the year party because he writes like this love note to her in the yearbook. Right. That he's going to finally. Unveil it before all the they feelings he has for her because yep. they've just been friends all this time and he can't he's he's got to get it out. So the whole yearbook gets read aloud to the party from that jock guy. Yep. Um, she basically puts him in the friend zone in front of everybody and he just blows down. He's like, fuck this. But like not just the friend zone, that hideous fucking T-shirt. Oh, my God. With their faces on. Oh, my cats. God. That's right. And you can see Probably it's so clearly, it's so clearly like homemade. Like it still has like the it's outline like, of the iron on. Graphic. Right. Like now you, nowadays you go to the mall and there's a kiosk and they make it and mm-hmm. it still looks that bad. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, never gift anyone that. No. Like if you are listening to this podcast, <laughs> nobody wants a fucking t-shirt printed by the guy in the middle kiosk in the mall with their no. face. 
in a cutout. Like nobody wants that. No. So this though, when he the runs out and he's in on. it, it's amazing. Yeah, like it's amazing. he's so like, fuck you, they have my yearbook. I gotta get out of here. And then he runs out and he has this hideous cat shirt on that he knows is gonna ruin his whole life, but he totally forgets about it. And then his whole yeah. evening is worse than it could it's have been. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is like the embarrassment of a lifetime because it forces him to completely go off the deep end where he's like, I'm flying to the other side of the of the country. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm gonna do everything completely different. I'm gonna lose weight. I'm gonna be super successful. I'm gonna show them. Yep. Right. Let's not also forget to talk about how great the fat suit is and the makeup right. on his face. Oh, like, it looks awesome. Even in 2020, watching mm. it in 4K yeah. on these TVs, it looked seamless. Yeah, it did. It looked great. So good. Um, yeah, so he goes, he becomes this big uh, famous music producer guy. Yep. This is like a perfect... Top of the label. Perfect for like Ryan Reynolds to play one of these so like Ryan douchey, Reynolds. you know, LA guys. But... I, I like him in this. I feel like he does the switch pretty well from like you really like him in the beginning and then you really don't like him at all. Like he's kind of really off putting and then they kind of swing you back on his side. Yeah, I think that they do a great job of like how coming back to his roots slowly brings mm -hmm. out the person he was mm -hmm. right. Like right. in funny ways, but then in like realistic ways too. Like it's like, you can't help, but you can't run from your past kind of thing mm -hmm. is the message. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So he gets, um, torpedoed with this, uh, crazy one of pop, my favorite characters of all yeah, time this crazy pop star samantha james right hi i'm samantha james <laughs> amazing character anna ferris is awesome i am an artist oh she has so many one-liners <laughs> there's so many lines in this yeah. that are so fucking good like oh my god that's hot <laughs> Almost every line she has. Doesn't she just at one point just yell, stupid dick or something like that? <laughs> like, she just has the best <laughs> lines. <laughs> I can't even talk about it, but that's one of my favorite moments. They're I fighting know. and she's like, no, you stupid dick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> and then the one that we always take, which is the, I'm sorry I'm not poor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> which is one of my... Go to lines with you one, and I. Yeah, that's such a fun oh my one God. to say. And Sorry, it, I'm not I poor. still laugh so hard every time we watch this when she does it because her <laughs> delivery is incredible. Yeah. She is just, I love her so much. I can't. It's amazing. Yeah. So he has <laughs> I'm crying to, now from laughing so hard. Yeah. So, <laughs> so his boss is like, you know, you got to go sign her. I want her new album or whatever. She's the hottest shit that there She's is. She's basically like Britney Spears with a guitar. Yeah, I love I love when you first meet her too. She's in the the booth like she's, recording a track. Who changed the key? Yeah, she's recording a vocal track and she's like not even close. Yeah, he's like nobody changed the key for the last yeah, 50 fucking right. times, bitch. Perfect. It's been the same. Yeah, and she grabs the guitar. She's like, I'm an artist. Um, and he tells her like he can't record with her playing at the same time and she's like, I need this. Yeah. <laughs> she just, and they mute her and shit. You guys are assholes. You guys, you guys are, are assholes. <laughs> fucking assholes. Okay, we could talk about every scene with her. It's, I mean, so Oh, good. she's, when, whenever she's in a scene, she steals the show. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Forgiveness. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, you know, he ends up, Chris Brander ends up back home because he's flying um, Samantha James out. Yep. <clears throat> over the holiday. Uh, are they supposed to go to Europe or something like that? They're supposed to go to Paris. Paris. She keeps going, I'm supposed to be in Paris. She, she, yeah, she blows <laughs> up the plane like a jackass. Like she's like microwaving something with aluminum foil or whatever. Sets the plane on fire. And she calls her dad, yeah. daddy. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Somehow this, so, it's just so convenient though that it's right in his hometown. Where, where are we? Yeah, that he hasn't been in 10 years. 10 like, years, literally. And he just randomly lands there thanks to Samantha James and her dumbness. What are the fucking odds of that? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, but I love it. I do. I love it. So that much. is how I feel with a lot of the Christmas movies. They all are like by chance coincidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when he gets back home, I guess he goes to the local bar and he finds uh, his friends. What is it? Clark and Darla. Yeah. Right? And then obviously he sees Jamie Palomino there. She's bartending. He's like immediately thrown back into... You know, his 
infatuation with i can't even say that word infatuation infatuation with her um which i have to say i was too she is magnetic yeah you were actually like oh wow she is a beautiful beautiful woman yeah she's i mean they also really kept her natural Mm -hmm. looking like again this is a this is a movie time where like you're not caking makeup on the actors and actresses and people are really just who they are before the plastic surgery Mm -hmm. i remember laughing at her outfit the denim dress with the yeah fucking foam sandal like four inches high like it was insane and i was just dying being like yeah that's what we used to wear (laughs) like that was was a cool look um but they really drove home like the girl next door you know the girl that everybody wanted in the small town vibe Mm -hmm. that you know she kind of maintained it absolutely perfect (laughs) this whole the casting and the dynamic between the two i think works so well so he wants to go on a date with her but she suggests immediately, lunch, immediately. right? She's like, let's go to lunch. And in his brain, he's friend like, zone. he's like, shit. He's like, that's like, that's the friend zone date. Like, that's not he's the romantic flip the date. script. But um, he can't with her. He's learned how to flip the script with all other women right. except Jamie Palomino. Yeah, he cannot figure out Jamie Palomino. Now, they go on this date to this, you know, this lunch date to the diner that I guess they used to go to all the time as kids. Yeah. So the waitress recognizes them and she's like, oh, bring your usuals. <laughs> Knowing that he's no longer a 500 pound piece yeah, of shit. Exactly. He's so a handsome. His usual, man. I guess, back then was like. A five, six stack of pancakes with like ch- hot chocolate and candy drizzled all over it. It's basically it. like, Buddy the Elf's breakfast. Yes. <laughs> it looks disgusting. Like, no, I'd probably eat it. Oh. So he's upset. He's like, I can't eat this. And like, she gets mad at him. She's like, why are you making such a big deal about nothing? And I was like, no, fuck that, Jamie Palomino. Like, you're a beautiful lady, but you're wrong because. <laughs> I would have been just as pissed off at him. I think he has a good point here. This is a small town vibe thing, right? Like it should be nostalgic of the lady remembering him 10 years later and knowing exactly what he would always order and it being a nice gesture and he just shit on it. (sighs) So I'm with Jamie Palomino of like, bite your fucking tongue, order something else and say, thank you so much. Take a bite of it, call it a day and order your fucking salad, bitch. Like nobody cares. I don't live my life like this. No, yeah, I don't. I I'm well, not. I'm not here to appease you in any way because you felt compelled you to give me this giant nice stack way. of pancakes that I'm a full grown man. You know damn well I don't want to eat this. I mean, I'm a full grown woman and I'd eat it. I, it's insulting. Anyway. Um. Yeah, well. <laughs> Um, Agree to disagree. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's trying to get with Jamie Palomino. He keeps passing um, Samantha off to his little brother, like her his horny little brother who fucking is obsessed with her. <laughs> oh my god, this guy! He's freaking tasers her in the mall, and she just falls like <laughs> from the top floor of the mall. <laughs> but then when he brings her back, <laughs> she's I- eating the tube of toothpaste. <laughs> yeah. But how is she not dead? Oh, my God. I mean, maybe she fell on something, you know, not hard. That's a long <laughs> ass way to fall. Yes, And it is. being tased at the same time. <laughs> like, what? Well, maybe the taser me- didn't make her body tense, right? Holy She was crap. like, ooh, jelly. Yeah. I, d- I love that follow up though that you're talking about with the, I think he he's like, like she's all right she's you he know. wraps her head with like ice ice pack and the thing and she's and sitting she's there with a tube of toothpaste <laughs> now, what, is it clear like did he take her to the hospital or he just tried to treat her himself uh, it looks he definitely like tried he just, to treat her himself because he said where did you get the Vicodin and he goes from mom right so he's self he's medicating her he's prescribed Vicodin <laughs> now where he tackles his brother and you oh get these really God. you get one of the many moments of where they really break down the sibling rivalry relationship of mm-hmm. him pinning him and doing the loogie yeah I love that and the slaps of like right. choops, choops, choops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that dynamic between him and his brother is so good yeah the loogie big brother move is incredible and even just the truce when he's I like remember, all right all right I remember, and those. I remember being on the receiving end of one of those loogie no yep. who did TJ no who? I was on the receiving end you think if yeah, anything receiving who was doing it to you like my uncle oh your uncles not yeah. your siblings that's why I was confused no. I'm like TJ didn't do that <laughs> no but yeah, it was like it's not fun. More. It's not fun looking at that little thing dripping down. So he keeps obviously he keeps failing with um, <laughs> with Jamie, right? And oh, the next date 
is they're going to go ice skating or whatever. Because he's like, oh, I, I know how I'll get her. Like, and I'll again, show off my ice skating ability. Love this. And right? he's so childish. He plans, like, I want my skates. Yeah. He's like, I, I know exactly what to plan. This date is going to be romantic. I'm going to kick ass on this date because I, I can, can skate, skate my now. ass off. And yeah, his mom threw away his skates. And he, I love his like, no. I know. It's like, like, just nothing's going right. Yeah. And he's digging and he finds his, oh, my snow globes. And it just, <laughs> it's like, again, that slow transition of right. like, you can't run from your past. Right. Like you can, but when it comes back to you, you're going to reel it all back in. And this is one of those moments. But yeah, man, like nobody wants to skate with rusty ass skates. Like, yeah, I love the contrast of this is a guy who is a big fish in a really big pond in California, right? There's tons of competition and he's like at the top, top of, of the his chain. game. Like he can dominate all these people on the highest elite level. Yep. But when he goes back home to this small town, he's where he's he should be a gigantic fish. He can own the town. Yep. He is a nothing and a nobody. It has just completely humbled him and chopped his legs yeah, out from under him. You know, right back to it's crazy. To retainer and cat shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how he gets the retainer, though, is one of my favorite parts of the movie. Oh, my right? God. Right. Because they go on the ice skating thing, but he has to do the rental skates. Fucking just, he just busts his ass on these skates like constantly. Yep. Right. They're playing the pickup hockey game. He can barely stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bunch of like eight year olds. Yeah. It's a bunch of children that are just whipping his ass. Yep. And he's like an all star hockey player. Yep. And, you know, back home. So he's all pissed off. He's like, I'm going to show them. So on like the last play of the game, he's like throwing the kids around like an asshole. And he does the slap shot. Hits the crossbar. Comes back, smashes him in the tooth. <laughs> and the way he flies backwards. It's amazing. I laughed out but loud. But every scene in that too where he gets like checked and shit, he's like in the air mm -hmm. falling. It's so good. And it's like so you're like, good. these are little ass kids and they're throwing Ryan fucking Reynolds around. It's I amazing. I love it. I yeah. love it too. It's so, so this good. is when Dusty comes back, though. Fucking Dusty. This man. is what's so great about this scene because it sets up the whole conflict for the movie. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she passes out because she sees Chris's mouth is like all covered in blood. So, Jamie Palomino, like, she passes out. I always have to say her full name. It's, you have to. So, she passes out and Dusty catches her. And he comes rising up. He comes up. up like a freaking knight in shining armor. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I mean, it's so funny. I remember watching this when I was younger and like I never really cared for Chris Klein. Right. Like I was always like, mm, like it's not yeah. everything. But he's a good looking dude. Mm -hmm. Like in this movie, I get like as an adult now, I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you know, get it. he's a good looking dude. He wasn't yeah. my type when I was young. I was right. a, I was a Skeet Ulrich fan, if you will, wow. along with Johnny Depp. Those were my that was There's my a, vibe. a type there. There is. It's very much type. But he's actually very much in that realm if you look at certain movies but they really make him the strong gaston kind of guy mm -hmm. in this which is always a uh, fun character it's yeah like but the best part is like you know he's like slimy like there's just oh, something yeah. about him that like you don't trust it and then it comes to light and it's the best well that's why you know his friend gives him the pep, pep talk about well, he's later like, on yeah he's like it's dinkleman it's man dinkleman like, dusty, dusty dinkleman, dinkleman. <laughs> like you got this and he's like, you're right Justy Dinkleman. But like meanwhile, they he doesn't got this. He fails constantly. So, first of all, they strap him into like what? Can, I, it looks like a sled that they. Yeah, put it's the thing because it's what in. they bring out when it's snowing. So yeah, he's in a sled. Yeah, it's pretty much They're a sled. So they can him, push him. This it, it doesn't make any sense, but I love it. They're pulling him like up this like this ramp. It's a ramp that's like pre carved out for the sled. Like it's perfectly carved as a ramp. No, I think they were him pulling up. him up from the the rink, and it was a mountain of snow. So the the thing is there from how far they pulled him, and then he gets pushed back down. I understand, but like, if you look at it again, it's like a pre-made ramp, like carved out perfectly for the sled, like designed for it to just it just go flying. I'm gonna look back now and yeah. say that's it's not what so it is. It's so strange, but, yeah. but I love it. All right, fine. Because you know, Dusty's putting the moves on Jamie, and he's like wiggling because he's all frustrated, <laughs> and he goes right back down this freaking like ramp chute. And oh my god, he does the little 180 flop and just lands on his head. Onto his face. <laughs> well, I don't know. What is it about like physical injury? I find so hilarious. You love it so so much. Oh my god, it's amazing. Um, Whereas I love like one-liners and you know, great execution of a joke. 
Yeah. Well, they have that's in this too. There's so, so much of that. Yeah. We haven't even talked about enough of it yet. Um Dinkelman writes this song. Jamie smiles. When Jamie smiles. <laughs> It's a pretty, it's it's a banger song, I feel like. Shut up, it's not. <laughs> no, it's terrible. You never, ever it's in your life it's call a hundred, that a good song. It's 100% terrible. It's trash. It's so trash. It's also hilarious but how bad it is when he plays guitar, like he plays like the, what is it, the double neck guitar? Oh, like, yeah. They make so he gets guitar. to the level of playing yeah. double neck guitar, but he writes a song, Jamie so Smiles, like, like yeah. get out of here. No, they do make him like a virtual or so guitar player. Like yeah. even I think uh, at one point, uh, Chris Brander even says he's like, I can't compete with him when he plays that guitar. It's like he has 18 fingers. <laughs> yeah. Like They really go over the top with this guitar player. Yeah. But I love it. It's like it's the perfect way to define that character that he would write this cheesy ass stupid song to get laid in like the sleaziest way possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just swap the name. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, I mean, we also can talk about that scene in the church when Jamie and Chris are fighting and he comes in the curtains. <laughs> He's like, he sticks his head through. He sticks his head you know, through. There's something funny about that. I don't... He says something, but he's like, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then Chris Brander's just over at that point. He's like, ah! And, and then they fight. Him. Oh my God, I just smacked my mic. That is another one of my favorite kind of scenes again of just like yeah. the way that it was executed was so good. Yeah. Like, and you just want to punch... Dusty Dinkelman in the face. <laughs> the exchanges between them, it's just like, it makes the whole movie, that whole Yeah, conflict. the whole chemistry of the cast is so good. It is. Yeah. Then uh, probably one of the best Samantha moments is... You know, she, she drives up. Yeah, she, 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 she really starts to piece together finally that like, oh, you whore? Chris is just avoiding me. He's with that other girl. Like that she whore, finally babe. pieces it together. <laughs> it's that whore. And she's like, yeah, I'm going over to her house. I'm driving through her. She drives through her lawn, basically. Yeah. Crashes into the family has like nine million lawn ornaments. Oh, ornaments. my God. Yeah. They go over the top with the house decoration. She crashes in and she's like calling Jamie a slut. She's or like, whatever. who are you? She's like, I am Samantha James. Right. Yeah, they get into a scuffle. Yeah, there's nothing worse than telling Samantha James you don't know who she is. I'll tell you that. Yeah. She drives off and like it grabs one of the Christmas light strings or whatever. And this causes a domino effect for like the whole lawn like goes on oh fire. My God. Santa goes on fire. The reindeer go flying. Literally. Yeah. Yep, it's amazing. It's the such whole an scene. epic farewell to this character, I feel like. These are the elements that make it a Christmas movie mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Like, True. There's a lot of Christmas festivity and vibes in each scene. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Chris and Dusty do their thing back and forth. You know, Chris keeps putting it in Jamie's head that, oh, he's just trying to sleep with you. She finally just addresses the elephant in the room, turns to Dusty and says, look, Dusty, I really, you know, I like you and I care about you, but, you know, as a friend, she puts him in the friend zone out in the open, basically just slamming the door shut on any hope that he had. Damn, I've done that. And at this point, Dusty doesn't give a shit anymore. He's like, fine, I'm outie. You yep. know, like he basically reveals that he was this sleazebag the whole time and whatever. I'm proud of it. Yeah. I mean, you I win think, some, you lose some. Right. But it's also just like, again, because of who he's become, he's just like, you're just another fucking girl on the radar, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm out. Yep. Fuck it. So I very mature of him. So mature. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the at the very same time, Chris is way too drunk at her bar. And just gives up. You yeah. gave up on life, didn't you? <laughs> you bum. You bu Get off the street, you fucking bum. <laughs> oh, Team America. He's so drunk that she's basically like, you know, I'm freaking done with you. He's like, you peaked in high school or some bullshit that yep. he's, you know, he's just angry because he can't get get with her, basically. Like he failed. Once again, once again. So this is a pretty harsh scene in exchange between them because she ends up like punching him in the face in the end, like yeah. knocking him out. I would probably too. So at this point, if you had this exchange with a person, you'd be like, yeah, that's that's over. That's yeah. never I'm not going to keep trying. I just got punched. But not the case here because he goes home and Samantha James is there in his house and he spends like 30 seconds with her and he's like, fuck this. I got to go back and take one last shot at Jamie. Yep. He's like, is this my future? Yeah. <laughs> so what the hell? He goes back and he does the little front porch romance pitch thing that we've seen time and time again in movies right i'll show up on her front porch i'll pour my heart out all will be right with the world right it's like again where it's 
it's a comedic spin <clears throat> on the cheesy romantic mm-hmm. holiday comedy. Yeah. And they had to have that in there. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's such a formula, but I don't know why it's so satisfying. It's satisfying in this one just because of like the way that it's all set up. Like he he really does like realize that he's like a shit person and Mm -hmm. he has to fix it. Right. Like deep down, you know, from when he was young, he was a good guy who was burned by the love of his life. And so he it pushes him to be this successful person, but he will never find love because he's so broken by what she did. And then it comes full circle. Yeah. There you go. Look lovely, at that moral lovely, lovely recap description you just had there. It's way better than the Netflix description. All right, let's move on to another segment of Would You Rather. Let's do it. Oh, that's right, because it's me this week. Yeah, so you come up with some Would You Rather's this time that I'm unaware of, privy to the show. So I'm excited about this. Yeah, I actually have quite a few. So would you rather work as a mall Santa for your entire life? Oh, my God. That's or... <laughs> <laughs> or become the real Santa and live at the North Pole. Oh, the real Santa. Why? That's like you're going back to like the thing. You're going to go be in like Antarctica. Yeah, I have magical powers, though. I guess this was too easy, this one. Yeah. I mean, I, if I get magical powers, I'm always going to pick magical powers. I looked powers. at it a lot deeper. Why would I be a, <laughs> why would I be a mall Santa forever? I don't know, because mall Santas are once a year. Out of the month, I look at it as like, oh, I just do this for the 30 days and then I at least have a good life for the other 11 months. <sighs> but all I can be, <laughs> but all I can be is a mall set. I can't no, be anything else. I mean, technically I didn't say that. I just said you'll be That's a- how you put it though. You Maybe. put it as like, you're a mall set <laughs> forever. Like forever and ever and ever. That doesn't sound appealing. <laughs> no. Um, all right. Well, I thought it was an easy one to ease in and you just shit on it. So right. fine. I enjoyed it nonetheless. <laughs> Great. Would you, Why? Which would you rather do? I would probably choose the mall Santa. I just said 30, like what? 30 to 60 days out of the year. I make some kids cry or right. smile. That seems worth it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird one, but all right. <laughs> it's supposed to be weird, isn't it? Okay. So chug a gallon of eggnog. Oh, or <laughs> eat an entire gingerbread house. Oh my god! <laughs> I knew this one would get you because a eggnog is nasty as fuck, and gingerbread houses are just covered in sugar, and so I know it would destroy you either you, way. Can you drink a gallon of eggnog? Why not? You can't drink a gallon of milk. <laughs> well, I guess you'll find out. No, I, th- I I don't think you'd be able to do it. You would puke before you could finish it. Okay, well, you got to finish it, so you got to puke and then keep going. <sighs> I hate puking. <laughs> I don't want to puke. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're basically, you're asking me like, <laughs> right you're asking me, do you want to puke or eat a bunch of really, really, really twice. sugary food? Potentially puke twice. <sighs> No, I got to go with the gingerbread house. It's going to give me such a stomach ache, but I don't... You're going to probably shit fire. It's going to be bad. (laughs) I'm going to need to go to the dentist like right after that. (laughs) I would definitely choose the gingerbread house. Yeah, right? I could kill that gingerbread house in two seconds. Yeah, no doubt. Um, But I knew that one would be hard for you. Okay, let's do... would Would you rather have Christmas Christmas tree tinsel for Mm -hmm. hair... Oh, or have fingernails that light up like Christmas lights. That's cool. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah, I'd go. You with weren't that. expecting these, would you? Rather's were no, you? I'd go with that. With the fingernails? Yeah, probably because I feel like with my weave, I'd feel like I was bald if I had tinsel for hair. The tinsel for hair sounds awful. Maybe if it was like 1984 and you were in like a hair band, it would work. I mean, how like, dope would I'm it be if Leopard. I had like LED changing lights in my fingernails? I see, like that creeps me out. So it's it's tough to say. Why? I mean, you wouldn't ever have to get your nails done. You could just digitally like change. But like, will them. they look like bulbs? I don't know. I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, I would assume, yeah, if they're like Christmas yeah. lights, they're gonna have see, I don't know. a little bit of a glow. Ugh. All right. Would you rather your elf on the shelf actually be alive? Mm-hmm. Or Santa actually in your bedroom watching you while you sleep. <laughs> oh my God. 
the elf being alive is terrifying. Terrifying. It's like Chucky or a gremlin. That that thing is so. You don't un- know where it's gonna it's be. So unpredictable. Yeah. At no. least Santa's just watching you. That's you're basically just walking around your house, going like like looking over your shoulder. Yeah. Everywhere. That's a living nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. That I, you got to go with Santa watching you while you sleep. <laughs> Because really, what am I doing while I'm asleep? I don't care. I don't know he's there. What is he doing? It doesn't matter. Because <laughs> because the elf isn't alive and trying to kill me. The elf isn't alive. So al- it doesn't matter. You just immediately assume that elf is, yes. is a murderous Who, toy. Whose mind doesn't go to that? Oh, the elf on the shelf is actually alive. What could its motive be? I mean, I agree with you. Like the minute the elf yeah, on the shelf became a popular sleep. thing was like, okay, so we're just basically telling children that there's this creepy fe- creepy creature staring at you at all times. And if you're not on your best behavior, you're going to get jack shit from Santa. Like talk about terrifying. Yeah. Insane. That's, that's so scary. Yeah. The fact that kids actually <clears throat> like it. Maybe they'll grow up and like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both agree. Elf on the shelf, kind of creepy. I mean, it's definitely creepy, but we have a Halloween elf on the shelf. Yeah. I have one that is specifically for Halloween, which it is, is in jest. Of... Yeah, I mean, it's in jest, but it's actually more applicable, really. Yeah. It's like the trick or treat elf. Right. Um, all right. I mean, I have one more if you want it. All right. I guess we're, we're going to close the podcast on this. Are we? Yeah. We're so long today. Mm-hmm. All right, fine. So the last, okay, if I'm going to close the podcast on it, oh, this is going to be, now I have to pick the best one of the last two. Okay. So the last one will be, would you rather eat your cereal with eggnog instead of milk? Oh, eggnog again. Yeah. And you don't even like cereal. Even so that's like why cereal. it's tough. Or... <laughs> Eat a candy cane sandwich. Oh, <laughs> oh, so bad. <laughs> I really tried to tailor cane. things to you, but a, be holiday. Think festive. about the nightmare that is a candy cane sandwich because you have the soft bread, right? That's going to stick to your mouth. Yes, yeah, soft bread and like the hardest fucking hard candy. Two dry options. Oh my God. Like. <laughs> Imagine that bite in your mouth, like the sharpest, hardest thing that you can chew, yep. along with one of the softest, chewiest things you could. Like, what? It's awful. It's razor blades cutting the roof of your mouth with <sighs> pillows at the same time. Oh, my God. Then you have the cereal, right, where the eggnog is kind of like I, 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 a I, I thick gotta go. I go, I'm swamp. Going, I'm going with that. I'm going with the cereal eggnog. I can't imagine. What cereal would you pick? Uh, I like Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles in eggnog? Well, yeah, doesn't it turn the water like a different I mean, color? Yeah, but like, like a... oh, you're putting fruity with like cinnamon. Cinnamon. Uh, that's a good point. See, I'm not a big, I'm not big on the chocolate cereal. Okay, but see, though. that's what I would do. That's where I was going with this. I would 100% take either Cocoa Pebbles, great alternative, or Cocoa Puffs, if you will, Cocoa Bunnies as what I eat currently, then that will make it like a chocolate cinnamon, which is cinnamon, which is like a Mexican hot chocolate. Uh, I get I mean, that does, just doesn't sound appealing to me. It sounds like a muddy mess of chocolate. No, it sounds great. All right. I mean, I think you're right, though. Th- there, It's a good strategy mixing the chocolate with the egg. Something nog. that will, like, you can't go Cheerios. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Nasty. You know, I'm going to taste it. eggnog. I'd rather... Alter it's like cocoa puffs with that. Cocoa puffs is bomb. Yeah, I said. I would, yeah. Cocoa bunnies is what we have here, so uh, you're gonna have to settle for cocoa bunnies. Can we try this? I'd rather die. I think we should try this. Ugh. Next pod. Well, maybe we'll just do it as a video on our page. Yeah. No, that'll be fun. Can we do it? <laughs> Want to try the cereals with eggnog? Yes. All right, we're gonna do the challenge. Who can eat? Who can eat the most of it before puking? <sighs> I'm all right. I'm excited for this. <laughs> We Even just though grit. I hate cereal and I hate eggnog, I, yo, I love I just, cereal. I just feel like this is a fun challenge. If I can get past the actual eggnog part of it, mm-hmm. then I will crush you because I could eat an entire box of cereal. Maybe we can get this as like a trending challenge: the cereal eggnog. <laughs> yeah, the best cereal eggnog thing. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to post this before the podcast, and someone beats <laughs> us to it. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully not. Amazing. Um, 
All right, so that'll do it for our first uh, Christmas movie mayhem. Um, two awesome ones there. I was hoping to get to a third one, but it's fine. We're running a little. We late. just got so excited because these are just two of our favorite movies, even outside of Christmas. I know. I feel like I can talk about both of those movies. I could forever. probably still talk about Just Friends. Yeah, like oh, it 100%. can it can keep going. Well, remember, as much as we love Just Friends and as much as we love anything, we don't give we awards, don't give for, awards art. for art. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs>